All right, well, I'll get started. And uh, the first little bit does, we don't need the slides as much. So through the next 25 minutes, I'm going to talk about some effective usage strategies for working with Composer and Git. I'm going to share some pain points that we have run into uh, through these, using these two technologies together as well as some tricks to speed up development, things that we have found useful. So my goal is that you leave this talk with a good understanding of how the two work together. Now, a couple of years ago, I thought our little agency was ahead of the times, if you will. We, uh, using Magento 1, we used Composer for package management, and we even compiled our style sheets using SAS. I thought we had a reasonable system for deploying code as well. And I will show you that uh, process here in a second. Basically, we just uh, SSH into the server, jumped into the folder, we ran uh, git pull origin master, composer update, npm install, and then we compiled our stash style sheets on the, on the production server. Now, that all seemed to work okay, and I'm sure you've heard, or just in what I told you there, it, you probably saw some issues with that. Imagine for a second that you were a, we were doing pair programming together, and you, and so we're deploying some code today. It was our largest client. This is a true story, happened a couple of years ago. And we jumped into the folder, we ran git pull origin master, and composer update fails. It says we have a permissions issue. Now, normally that's not a big deal, but today with my inexperienced, let's say, with using Composer, I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know why this, I'm having permissions, permissions issues. In trying everything, I end up actually deleting, or I think, I don't remember if it was moving, the Composer autoload file, vendor slash autoload.php. This was our largest client. If you can imagine that they are losing over $100 a minute that they are down, and they are currently down right now. So, my stress level, when, you know, when we start out, it's, there's not much stress, but now it's kind of going through the roof. It's like, what in the world do I do? I try Google, I, I look at Stack Overflow, uh, Composer Docs. <laughs> at that point, I would even look at an Experts Exchange uh, article on how to get this fixed. Nothing seems to work. Finally, I figure out, I remember that staging is on the same site, server, and I copy the vendor folder from staging, drop it into production, and it works. If you would have seen the slides here, you would have seen a number of the mistakes that I made in this process, and I think each one compounded one upon another. You see, that day I decided that two things need to happen. Number one, I need to learn a little bit more about Git and Composer. And number two, we need to figure out a better deploy system. Today's talk is going to be mostly centered around how to use Git and Composer together. They're very powerful technologies, but they can sure make a disaster if one doesn't know what they were doing. You probably would say that I knew just enough to be dangerous back then. And my goal is to give you the information to get you past that dangerous point yourself. A little bit about me. I um, have all four Magento 1 certifications. I just got the Magento 2 certification. I created a study guide for the Magento 2 Certified Solution Specialist uh, certification. So if you are looking to take that test, uh, it's a little bit harder than the Magento 1 Certified Solution Specialist test. But I, I've created a uh, study guide and had some really positive feedback about that. I've also created a um, continuous integration system. And I'll talk just, if we have time, for just a minute or so at the end of this talk about that. And then I also, um, I have our, my company, Swift Otter Solutions. The first thing we're going to talk about is what is version control or what is Git. Um, Git is version control. And so version control is like a journal. My wife does this journaling thing sometimes, and basically she writes down what she did in the day. And you know, I've come to see it's really kind of interesting. You look back over the last few years and you see what one did. Our, my memory fades. I couldn't tell you what I did last year at this time. But as she tracks and, and writes down in her journal, she knows what she has done. It's, it's, it's informative. Git is the same way. And what better application for using Git or using this journaling than the source code, that, the, the code that we write? Using Git is that journal. It means we, every time we are finished with either every 
so often in a day, every day, how often, ever often you create a commit, you write a message saying, this is what I did in, with this code. For us, we use JIRA for our issue management. And ish, JIRA and GitHub actually link up together. And for every issue, we can see every commit that was done against that issue because we include the JIRA ticket in the title of the commit as well as a brief summary of what we did. And that really has been helpful because then as you link issues together, as issues relate one to another, you can then go back and see what happened. If, 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 if a problem reoccurs, you can see the code that you made, that you modified previously. Composer is related to Git in that Composer is built on Git. But Composer is really what I consider to be a delegation system. It would be, for example, like with this journaling thing. Say I get really passionate about journaling. And I decide I'm going to journal every event of not only my life, but of my wife's life. And our daughter's life is, she's two years old right now, so she's not old enough to start her own journal. But I realize it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to do this journaling. So I maybe ask my wife, would you mind journaling our vacation for us? I'm delegating, asking this journaling to be done by someone else. That's basically what pack, uh, Composer is. It's package management. It allows the software vendors, whether it be Magento, module developers, or just tool developers, to be able to manage the track their own changes. And those are going to be, and then we just import a specific version. Composer is, works with versions. The, when, when, we, when it works with these versions, it, we specify ranges, and Composer is really the smarts to figure out which ranges of, which specific versions of packages work best together. I guess you might say it's an online dating website for, for packages. It figures out which ones work together. Who knew that a new MacBook Pro would cause some problems like this? <laughs> Anyways, all right, so, so we have uh, three main components, and I'm going off this by me on memory for right now, so um, I'll double check and make sure I'm not missing anything here. But um, we have three main components in, with Composer. We have the Composer JSON file, the Composer lock file, and the vendor folder. Each one of those files has their own unique usage and, and depends on what, what, you, what your business needs are is what ones you include in Git. Composer JSON, though, is always included in Git. This is the basic description of your, your website or your package. Now, ultimately, in Composer, there is two uses for this. All right, if you're a package vendor, if you're creating a package to be used by others, you're going to include just the Composer JSON file in Git. If you are a building your, an, a website, you're going to include the Composer JSON and the Composer.lock. And actually, there could be a case for including the vendor folder as well. The Composer JSON is, if you will, a, the version generalist. It'd be like going to a fast food restaurant and saying, I want a salad. The person behind the counter is then left to figure out what kind of salad you want. The Composer JSON is where you specify the overall settings and information relating to your project. If you look at the Composer JSON file that comes with Magento 2, there's a lot of information in there, including auto load information and other details about your project. The composer.lock file is the version, is the specific version fi file. It would be like going to your fast food restaurant and saying, I want a Caesar salad with ranch dressing. You are saying a very specific type of salad that you want. The composer lock file is actually created when you run composer update or composer install. And this file is, has every single, down to the git commit of the packages that you're importing. Every single one of them is found in there. Composer lock is very specific. You want to include this in your repository, in your git repository, because if you, this, this keeps your packages the same from, say, staging to production. You run composer update on your local system, which then updates the composer lock file, and then that is, then you can deploy that on staging and production. Then we have the vendor folder. This stores all of your packages that you have downloaded, that you have loaded into your project. You have 
the vendor slash autoload.php. If you are creating another project that doesn't have an autoloader built in, you can use the vendor slash autoload.php to load in all the composer dependencies. It doesn't load in the, your, the dependencies you have created yourself unless you specify that in the autoloader section of composer JSON. Then inside this vendor folder, there is vendor name slash package name. That's pretty straightforward. You had the Mageno uh, folder, which has all the Mageno files in there. And actually, if you want, there is the Mageno 2 base package. For some reason, when I have been, uh, when I've used Mageno in the composer install, I think it's the post install command doesn't always run properly. And you can find those files that populate the root, the base directory for Magento. You can find those in vendor Magento slash Magento 2 base. So that's one of those tricks. Making progress here? <laughs> this is crazy. I understand. All right, so we have the three components of Composer. We have, it's funny, I think actually the, um, the display is getting locked up on this. So the three components of Composer, uh, Composer JSON, lock, Composer.lock, and, com and vendor. All right, I, I, I'll, I'm gonna read you this quote um, by Christoph at Fuman. Incredible, he had an incredible blog post about um, getting, about Composer and why you should be using it. But listen to this, what he has to say. He says, I consider placing extensions under the app code directory in the same category. Same category as it instantly creates technical debt when upgrading. By the time you upgrade, you probably don't even know anymore what was written. And I'm sure we've all, certainly if we work with Mageno 1, we've, we've done this package installation routine 100 times. We download the, we purchase it, we download it, drop in the app code folder, hopefully do a code review, we test it, and eventually push it out to production. The benefit of Composer here, as we are able to use packages with Composer from third-party vendors, and Fumian certainly has adopted that idea, is it allows them to delegate, it delegates the changes and change tracking to them. We just import and we update the new versions. On the other hand, uh, Max Chadwick recently tweeted out, he said, how, how do you do, or do you code review each extension you add to a given code base? If so, how does Composer installs impact that? So, that is one area that Composer does have some challenges in, is this code review. Keeping, knowing what code you're installing. Ultimately, you could say uh, a vendor is hacked, some malicious code is installed, you run your Composer update, and you now have installed malicious code on your customer's website. So that's one of the challenges with Composer, and I think it really comes, the development side, for us developers, has been made easy, but it now comes down to a business decision. Do you want to just blindly install code, or are you, do you want to code review it? If you want to code review it, there's really two options. You develop a list of vendors that you do trust, and install everything else into the app code directory, or you include the vendor directory in Git which can be a mess. I mean, there's, there's thousands and thousands of files, and that's one thing I appreciate about Composer, is I only have to track two files in Git, as opposed to every single module's file in Git. That's the question right there. Do you want to code review those modules or not? I want to touch on the, uh, some, the basic Composer commands. We have Composer require. This is how you get a package, a module, into your project, you require it. You can also do the same thing as in, in putting, making the update into your Composer JSON file. You do the vendor name slash package name, and then a colon, and then the version range that you want to do. And we'll talk about the version ranges here in a minute. There's also Composer Update. And Composer Update takes the, finds the latest versions within the ranges that you have specified, and it then allows it, and it, then it goes updates and downloads the new packages and it updates composer.lock. Composer install, on the other hand, that downloads only the packages that have been allowed in composer.lock. It's very, very specific. So 
ultimately, the way I see the workflow working here is you run Composer Update on your development machine, do whatever testing you want to do if, for, to make sure that everything works properly. Then you deploy this out to staging and then eventually onto production. When you do that, you run Composer Install in those cases. I think it's because it's um, yeah. plugged in there. So we have the, uh, so the composer update, composer install, and composer require. One thing I wanted to touch on is what happens when you need to merge a, another branch into your Git. So you're, say you're working on the master branch or you're working on a, a, sep a feature branch of that and you need to update it, refresh it with the latest master branch data. What happens then if composer lock is, is uh, there's a conflict there? What we do is we use the Kaleidoscope app. Uh, it's available for Mac. And in that, you can then either, for like the composer JSON file, you can pick and choose which version you want to work with. For composer lock, I just copy either the local or the remote. And that's one thing, uh, an important point to, for Git, is local is the branch you're currently on. Remote is the branch that you are merging in. So whenever you're working with that, you can decide it's either local or remote that you're going to use for your composer.lock file. But you're going to copy that in. The other thing about, uh, com uh, about Composer is the usage of packages.com. We have uh, worked with, used that for, I think it's about a year now. And I really liked this as a service. It's basically Composer as a service, if you will. What it does is it, they have their own mirrors for the composer packages. So it makes it very, very fast. I'm thinking it's about a three to 400% speed improvement uh, downloading the packages through um, Packagist. In addition, it's supported by the people that created Composer. Very bright guys and, uh, and very helpful and very friendly. So if you run into issue, literally any issue with Composer using Packagist makes it super easy. And then also for module developers, they have, they're launching a service or maybe they have launched it by now, to be able to help distribute those packages out. There's a coupon code. Once we, uh, if we get this working, that'll be up there. It's, I think it's me, or I won't even say it because I don't remember it off the top of my head. I can just do without yeah, this. No problem. That's no problem. Appreciate it. I appreciate you guys' work on it. Thank you. Afterwards, if you have, um, if you would like, I can share with you the Composer install that we use uh, for getting, for installing the packages on uh, staging or production. All right, so that was kind of the first section, talking about Git and Composer. So next one is versions, and I'm going to go across this pretty quickly. Uh, versions, I'm sure you're familiar with how they work. Uh, we have major, minor, and patch. So the first number is major. Versions that will have breaking changes. The second one will have is the minor that's not supposed to have breaking changes. Uh, new old functionality is supposed to be deprecated. And the third one is the patch. Um, one thing is with this is don't use, don't include a package as dev master. For me, that's the lazy, easy route that can be tempting to take. You say, um, download this package as dev master. And dev means a branch. So you do dev hyphen and then the branch name. So it could be master, dev dash master, dev dash develop. It's bad because this is using the latest and ultimately it might be, it's gonna have, you're going to have a hard time finding other packages that match. I've learned that the hard way. Uh, the most common one that I use is the tilde, and then for, in Magento's case for 2.2, tilde 2.2. Uh, what that is saying is load any package that has the version of 2.2 and greater, but up until version 3. So and it'll, it'll be anything between 2.2 
to less than three, not including three. So it allows the minor version to increment as time goes on. You can use wildcards, you can use greater than, you can use less than. Um, if you are a module developer, so you're creating a package to be distributed, don't include the version in your composer JSON file. Use get tags for creating those versions. And I do have to say this, use self-control. Don't import tons and tons of packages. I think that is one issue that can come as a result of using Composer. It's so easy to import these packages, but use some self-control because, and think that each one of them could possibly slow down your website a little bit. All right, so let's look at some tricks for how to make your life easier, a little bit faster development here. One idea we've had, and we've played around with this a little bit, is the idea of using an aggregate package. So in a Composer JSON file, you can say, my project depends on this, other project and this other project and this other project. What if you had a composer package, basically just a git repository with a composer JSON file in there that listed out a whole bunch of other packages that you wanted to include for a basic Magento to install? So you don't have to go through every project to remember, okay, well, I had this package and this package and this package installed in there. There also is a, uh, you can come up afterwards as well, uh, to find this, but there's also a uh, package that, a, that someone put together to parallelize Composer installs. So it makes it a lot faster. So it's downloading from multiple mirrors at once as opposed to one at a time in a linear format. If you are looking at getting into some module development, I'm sure those that do it full time have a good solution figured out. But what I have done is I use in the, com, in the global composer JSON file, which is in the home directory slash dot composer slash composer dot JSON, you can put a, add a path repository, and you, the type is path, the URL is the path to your module, and you can include that module anywhere you want on your system, and it comes in as a symlink. In that case, it's really easy to track your, track your uh, repository, your package in a separate location, but use it in multiple projects in your, on your system. Another trick, and I, I, like to I like mentioning this because there's so many, I think, tools that we don't actually use, and that is, when was the last time you looked up Git help? Just type in Git help. There's so many different commands that are available, and especially, my favorite is Composer list. List every, every command that's available in Composer. And there are some pretty neat ones in there. For example, Composer show shows the versions of the installed packages. Composer validate. It tells you whether your Composer JSON is valid or not, and especially that's useful for package developers. Composer, sh Composer show, and then you say dash dash tree argument, and that shows a tree view of all the listed dependencies. So those are the tricks. A couple things that I found that help, have been helpful to me and working through that. I wish, again, it's, it's funny we don't have the slides here, but I, if, if we did, I would go through, um, there's a couple of, to tie this all together, there's a couple of deployment um, ideas that, I've, that I have um, and other people, the projects that they've worked on. Um, because it seems like that's kind of been in a little bit of the pain point for Magento 2. It's, Magento 2 is incredible, it has so many good features, but it seems like many people are still trying to figure out how to get this code out to production. Ultimately, that is the culmination of our Git and Composer usage, because that's all there to help smooth the process out getting to production. But in that process, there are still some challenges. If you are struggling with that, there's a couple of packages out there that will help. Um, the, there's a uh, Mage Deploy 2. It's in PHP, uh, it's a great package. Uh, David Alger's Capistrano for Magento 2 is another great solution. That's written in Ruby, so you might have to get a little bit familiar with that. And then finally, the package that we've wrote, that we use, is a continuous integration set of, call it bash scripts and Jenkins files that are built on, that run on Jenkins. So it's basically end-to-end -end system. Uh, it's a little more difficult to set up than with David Alger's or this, uh, the other mage deploy, but it really is a great solution for getting code out to production, running your unit, your integration tests, and ensuring that all your code works properly. 
So in summary, uh, Git manages hopefully your, just your project files. Again, it comes back to a business decision whether you want Git to also track your composer dependencies as well, the reason being for code review. Composer manages packages and versions, keeps everything up to the latest version. Keep in mind, we don't want to include the composer lock in Git, as well as we need to use specific version numbers in composer, or ranges of them. Don't include dev master. So I'll be here today and tomorrow. I'd love to hear if you have feedback. If you have any tricks, I'm always learning myself. So if, there's, if you have any tricks, any ideas, how, to, uh, how we can collectively improve on this subject together. Also, my uh, Twitter is Joseph Max S, J O S E P H M A X S. It's been a pleasure being with you all today. Thank you. Um, thanks for bearing with the uh, tech problems and appreciate their, uh, their help in trying to get those resolved. So, thank you. Uh, hold on one second. Um, uh, questions? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes, I, I meant uh, to say re that. Repeat the question. Was, uh, yes, did, we, uh, did I ever figure out what happened at the beginning with that beginning story? I, I'm ashamed to even say this, but I think what happened is I accidentally was, uh, uh, was sudoed up as root and must have somehow run composer, unfortunately, update. Um, and that's what caused the, the permissions issues. And again, my complete inexperience then Day, too day, I was very dangerous with my little bit of knowledge back then. I think that's what caused the problem. So don't run Composer as a root.